Congratulations on the purchase of your new Millermatic 141, 190, or 211. And thanks for choosing Miller. With your Millermatic, you can count on years of trouble-free, multi-purpose welding. Before you begin setting up your Millermatic 141, 190, or 211, please take a few minutes to review important safety information and tips. And remember to wear OSHA-approved personal protective equipment during setup, maintenance, and welding. Start by unboxing the machine. Remove the MIG gun, regulator, and shipping kit. The shipping kit includes an owner's manual, a sample spool of weld wire, gas hose, material thickness gauge, extra contact tips, work clamp, and Velcro cord wraps. The Millermatic 211 also includes MVP plugs for 120 and 240 volt power. Before proceeding, take time to review the safety section of the owner's manual that came with your Millermatic. For easy reference, you'll find a parameter chart and basic setup tips inside the door. Before you set up your new Millermatic, make sure you have your welding safety equipment handy. A helmet with at least a shade 10 lens is recommended. Before setup, make sure your machine is unplugged. Start by identifying the work lead at the front of the machine. Pull the work lead out of the drive cabinet through the lower access hole. Then connect the control cable for the MIG gun. The connector is located inside the door under the drive for protection. Route the control cable through the MIG gun access hole in the front of the compartment to the four pin connection. Twist the collar to tighten and secure it out of the way of internal drive components. Next, insert the MIG gun into the drive casting, making sure it's completely seated into the drive assembly. Tighten the gun connection to the receptacle with the threaded T-knob. At the end of this video, we'll demonstrate how to install the optional SpoolMate 100 spool gun to weld aluminum. Route the lug end of the work lead through the work clamp and land the lug on the outside of the clamp. Using a wrench, tighten the nut on the clamp. For solid wire with shielding gas, the work cable should be connected to the negative output terminal. This is how it is shipped from the factory. Now you need to select the type of gas appropriate for the welding you'll be doing. 7525 shielding gas is the most popular mixed gas for MIG welding because of its low spatter. 100% CO2 can also be used for mild steel. Tri-mix shielding gases are recommended for stainless steel, and 100% argon is necessary for aluminum. Note that self-shielded flux core welding does not require gas. Make sure the cylinder is turned away from you. Open the cylinder valve slightly to purge any debris from the outlet and then close it. Thread the large fitting end of the regulator into the top of your gas bottle. Use a wrench to tighten. Next, connect the gas hose to the regulator. Attach the hose from the regulator to the back of the machine and tighten the connection with a wrench. To install the drive roll, place the drive roll on the shaft. Push in and turn until the pin aligns with the proper groove setting. The 024 groove is the outermost groove. The middle groove is for 030 or 035 wire, and the back groove for flux core or stainless steel welding. To install wire on the Millermatic 141, 190, or 211, place the spool on the shaft, making sure that the pin on the machine fits into the hole on the spool. The wire should pull from the top of the spool in these machines. Install the locking nut to hold the spool in place. Unwind a few inches of wire and snip so you have a straight piece of wire. Thread the end of the wire through the inlet guide, across the drive roll, and into the MIG gun liner. Close the pressure lever and raise the tension knob until it seats into position. Miller recommends a 10-pound spool of Hobart wire to best meet your welding needs. But if you prefer to use the included 1-pound spool, you'll need to remove the spool adapter. To remove the adapter, remove the tension nut inside the adapter. Then pull the spring and washer out with the adapter. Install the spool and then replace the washer, spring, and nut in that order.
plug in the machine and turn it on. Be sure your machine is plugged directly to an appropriately sized outlet. Try to avoid extension cords, but when necessary, be sure to refer to the owner's manual for correct sizing. To prepare the gun, start by removing the gun nozzle. Straighten the gun to reduce any kinks. Then, hold the trigger of the gun. After three seconds, the machine will go to jog mode and wire feeding will speed up. Feed out wire until about one inch past the gun end. Select the proper contact tip for the wire size you're using. Thread the contact tip onto the end of the gun and tighten with the pliers. Cut the wire about 3 8 inch from the end of the contact tip. Then reinstall the nozzle. The final step is to adjust the drive roll tension for trouble-free welding. Feed a few inches of wire out of the gun. Then angle the gun close to an insulated surface, such as a wood block, and feed the wire until it curls into a two-inch loop on the wood without slipping. If the wire slips before you're able to create a two-inch loop, tighten the knob to add tension. If the wire doesn't start slipping with smaller than two-inch loops, reduce tension. Snap the wire off, then close and latch the drive compartment. Self-shielded flux core welding can be beneficial when welding outside or when it's difficult to haul shielding gas. Before welding with flux core, you first need to change the polarity of the machine to negative. To do this, connect the work clamp lead to the positive terminal and the wire drive lead to negative. For self-shielded flux core welding, it's not necessary to use a gun nozzle because there is no shielding gas. Let's take a look at parameter setup now. The auto set feature makes setup quick and easy. On the Millermatic 141 and 190, this feature only works with mild steel and 7525 shielding gas. First, select your wire diameter and then your material thickness. The Millermatic 211 features advanced auto set, which works with five different wire types and gas combinations. First, select your material type and gas. Then select Wire Diameter and choose your material thickness. For all machines, you can still use Manual Mode if you want to fine-tune your setting. Select your desired voltage and wire feed speed to dial in your welding parameters, using the parameter chart inside the door as a starting point. To weld aluminum, the setup process is slightly different. Aluminum welding involves argon gas and a spool gun to feed the wire consistently. The process for installing the optional spool gun is similar to installing the MIG gun. Route the gun trigger control cable through the small slot in the front of the compartment and tighten the threaded collar. Insert the end of the gun through the drive opening until it's tight against the drive assembly. Tighten the gun securing T-knob. Aluminum welding requires 100% argon gas so ensure you have the correct shielding gas. The Millermatic 141, 190, and 211 automatically detect the presence of the spool gun when the trigger is pulled, so there's no need for a spool gun switch. The spool gun holds the spool of wire, so first remove the spool cover and lay it on a flat surface. Start your spool of aluminum wire by straightening about four inches of wire. Begin to thread that wire into the inlet guide before placing the spool in the gun. Pull the gun trigger to allow the drive rolls to pull the wire through and push out to the end of the gun. Install the proper contact tip. Replace the nozzle and the spool cover. Follow these steps and you'll be on your way to enjoying the capability and versatility of your new Millermatic 141, 190, or 211.